Hey guys, how is it going? It's your boy Gaz919 here. And what we're doing today is changing the oil on the Safira. Uh, this is something that I haven't done so far, so I figure I may as well do a video on it. So because this is sort of like the daily and it's not exactly uh, Dennis, I have sort of been a bit of cheapskate on buying the stuff. So I've just gone for uh, the uh, standard blueprint filter, nothing fancy. And the oil, I've just gone for the standard sort of OEM advised stuff so yeah no shell helix water or anything just just standard oil for a standard car right then so i've literally just started the engine up for a tad bit just so we can warm the oil up so it will drain a bit better um what i'm gonna do this is sort of like a quick sort of on the road sort of oil change usually if, if you want to do it perfect you want your car to be on a flat surface ideally it's a bit awkward because if i'm off the curb then i'm dipping towards the uh, drainage but if i'm on the curb i'm sort of just past level and off angle the other way so yeah i think i might just leave it how it is and drain it like that the oil was last changed when i bought the car at the start of the year and now i've done 7,000 miles on the fully synthetic oil. Usually, you know, the manufacturers say it's good for 10,000, but I, I don't know, I like doing it around seven. Some people do it around six or five, depending on personal preference, really. Either way, you can't go wrong unless you go over 10, 10K. I mean, uh, I'd, ideally, I wouldn't say leave it till 10K. I'd change it a little earlier, because you, you'll notice the color of the oil. If you do check it, you'll notice it just starts to go, start going quite black. And ideally, you want it to be a nice, like, golden brown colour. So I've just had it on takeover for a few minutes. Um, I've turned it off now. I'm just going to leave it for literally maybe about five minutes. Just so it can cool down a bit and a lot of the oil can just sort of, like, drain back down to the sump. And then we'll uh, get the sump plug out and get the oil drained. The sump plug is located at the bottom of the sump. In this case, we have a nice purple shiny bolt. Usually you'll have a Torx in there. But you're literally slacking that off. I'm sure you've got something underneath it to catch the oil and uh, let it flow out. Some people do take the oil cap off at top, but it doesn't exactly matter too much. I have in this instance just to give it a try, see if it makes any difference. Um, but yeah, I'm going to take this off now, let the oil drain, and then we'll go from there. I'm not going to record under here because I haven't got a hell of a lot of space. So as we can see, this one that was put in um, from last oil change when I bought it, I remember him telling me about this actually. But it's a magnetic one so with these you just want to look for like anything peculiar like any large metal shards on the tip or anything in this case there's nothing really there but you know the oil isn't as bad as it could be it's sort of a uh, sort of gingery brown but for the most part you know it still needs a change at the end of the day right then so we'll clean the sump plug up and now that looks like it's about finished draining the oil so what we're going to do now is literally clean that up as it's dripping and put some plug back in and then we'll get the oil filter changed. Okay, so here's our filter down there and funny enough, the flex head um, spanner set I'm using has got every size except for the one size that I need, which is 23. So I'm going to have to go into my Helford Advance kit and uh, pull out a 23 socket and extension. As it turns out, um, I tried a 24 spanner and it's too big, but I tried a 24 socket and it appeared to be just right. So I've put a uh, flex head on this with an extension, large ratchet, and it's freed it. So now we can release it the rest of the way by hand. Obviously we want to be careful underneath because it's going to drop quite a bit of oil down. So we'll get our bowl underneath and then we can clean it up after. This is the old filter in comparison with the new one. Obviously the new one's going to look better because it isn't drenched in oil. But, you know, like the colour of the oil and that, you can tell it's due a change. And also, we've uh, got a new O-ring with this one, so we can get rid of this old O-ring here. And whenever you're doing this, you want to make sure you always take these off. Never double up. That's the sump plug back in. The oil filter has been changed and the new seal put on. And most, uh, more importantly, the old seal has been taken off because, like I said, you never want to double seal. Um, I've used this just to save like dirtying up the engine bay. I've, um, you know, it's just standard two litre bottle of lemonade. I've cut it up and made myself a funnel. Good thing about this is you can just throw it away when you're done with it. Um, and then, obviously, now it's time to put the oil in. And this engine in particular takes 4.5 litres of oil, so there won't be much left of this by the time I'm done. Also, I've just noticed 
I, I could do with chucking a bit more coolant in as well so that is another thing that I'll more than likely do but yeah uh, put this oil in and then we'll uh, start her up right then so I've topped the oil up it's about just under full on the stick now I'm gonna put the lid back on I'm gonna start it up let it run for about five ten minutes it might start smoking because I've spilled a bit of oil on the uh, manifold but it should be okay to be fair right then obviously make sure it's in neutral Go for your ignition processors. You know how to start a car. I don't know why I'm telling you how to start a car. And then, uh, and there we go. And it should sound smooth. We're just going to leave it five, ten minutes. Let the oil get up to temperature and circulate around the block nicely. And then we should be all good. Right. Okay. So that is done. Uh, car seems to be ticking over quite nicely. It's been left for about ten minutes now, so it's up to temperature. So yeah, happy days. We've um, put the old oil in this windscreen wash tub for the time being. We're going to take it to a local recycling plant to get rid of it. Obviously, with oil, as you should know, never pour it down the drain or anything like that. It needs to be disposed of properly. That is the oil changed on the Safira. Um, remember, after you change it, you know, just check it again a few times after, just to be certain. And obviously, if it's running a bit low, or, um, just top it up a bit. Um, and if worst case scenario you've overflowed it, you don't be afraid, just take the sump plug out and just be quick with it, just pull it out and then put it straight back in and throw it back up again. Uh, but that's like worst case scenario. But yeah, that's how you change the oil and the oil filter on a Vauxhall Safira B. If you have enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, maybe even hit that bell icon for notifications on future uploads. But until the next time guys, peace.